good morning from my balcony on the Alma Magna on the Danube River in Vienna. So we've made it to Austria. Look behind me, I've got the city of Vienna right there. So we've got a very full day today. We have a morning excursion that's gonna take us to many, many sites. So many, uh, you'll see when we get there. Then for the lunch break, we could come back on the ship, but we're not because the Easter markets are happening right now. So we're gonna stay in downtown and hit the Easter markets. Then we will meet back with our ship to do the afternoon tours to the palace. And there's another Easter market at the palace. So that's gonna be really cool that we're here during the times. I didn't even know Easter markets were a thing. I knew Christmas markets were a thing in Europe but now there's also Easter markets and we might have a little surprise this afternoon depending on how I feel because honestly I'm sick so yesterday I did not get off the ship just kind of skipped the day stayed in got some rest so I was fine when I got here on this trip and it's just the wind the wind in Budapest was so strong I literally had wind burned on my cheeks and the wind was hitting me so hard in the face that it didn't my sinuses didn't like it very much and gave me a sore throat and all that good stuff so I am taking medication feeling better today because I got rest and let's go hit Vienna so we're starting at the Imperial Palace here in Vienna and just driving through this city is absolutely amazing the architecture the old buildings the size of the buildings are just staggering crazy they said that the Imperial Palace has 2,500 rooms Wow so we've been walking up to the palace from where we got dropped off and the outside of the palace is impressive, but when you come into these courtyards, that's when like the opulence really shows. You know, we've got these domes up here, we've got the statues, it's just, I mean, these buildings are huge and all built kind of right around the same time period. And each building has a different style. So for instance, the parliament building, which I haven't shown you yet, is built in a Greek style because they said, you know, the Greeks were the leaders and we wanted to emulate that and then we've you know they've got they've just mimicked different styles throughout history we've got medieval styles and baroque styles and renaissance styles and it's just amazing to see all this architecture here and none of these buildings are small they're all very tall and i say tall you know it's five six stories tall and just massive so you see the architecture of the chapel is very different than the architecture all around it. This was a fortress area of the uh, Imperial Palace, but this is the seat of the Viennese Boys Choir. We've all heard of that. These stables were built in 1565, so that kind of helps date part of this area, because this is a building that was built over many, many years. These stables have been here for a very long time. very beautiful statue here in the middle of the square but its meaning is kind of sad it represents the plague and the fact that these that some people did survive the plague and so they erected this statue to say we did this we survived it and we're still strong after the plague came through Europe many 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 years ago I love this when you're walking through and you've got modern shops and old buildings and then you turn the corner and there's a cathedral that looks like that you can tell is very old very elaborate and beautiful just wow this is saint stephen's cathedral built in the middle ages 12th century and when this was built you got to think that all of these big buildings were not here people lived in very small homes around this massive cathedral and at the time the spire was built it was the tallest building or the second tallest building in the world so that says a lot i mean 12th century that's a really high spire you know it's just amazing that they could build these types of structures back before any type of modern technology we have now it took a long time to build it but they built it right you know 
know, I think I was being looked out for that our last stop right across from St. Stephen's Cathedral is a pharmacy. So I was able to go in, get some ibuprofen because I was out of that, get some nasal spray and get cough drops. No idea the flavor, I think they're honey. Everything's in German, so I'm doing my best to figure this out. Luckily, the person working there did speak very good English and told me the doses that I needed to take for everything. So, I think I'll be good to go the rest of the trip. So I've learned a little bit about limestone construction being in this part of the world. So this church was built from limestone and it's a very porous rock. So over time, it collects all the sediments and will eventually turn black. So you can tell parts of the church that are, that are black and then the front part of the church has been restored and cleaned and looks like the regular limestone or what it did in the beginning. And I think once now in modern times they seal it to where those sediments can't get back in it and it won't turn black anymore. Now it's time for the Easter markets or Ooster markets as it is pronounced here or I think how it's pronounced here. And here's the first one. There's two right here in the central area and then one over that we'll try and get to near the Schomburg, Schomburg? Schomburg. Schomburg. See, I'm terrible at pronunciation. <laughs> There's one over there this afternoon that we're gonna try and get to. This is a little market, but let's go check it out. You know, I said it was a smaller market. It looked small from the outside, but then you turn the corner and it's just row after row after row of stalls, and then it wraps around and there's more stalls on that side. So I'm super excited about this. I haven't been to Christmas market yet, so this is our first experience at a market, or my first experience at a market, and so we're here for Easter. There's so much yummy looking food here. So lots of cheese I'm seeing, lots of sausages and crepes. There's lots of sweets here. So we're gonna make the whole loop and then decide what to eat. langos but I think I've had enough langos in Budapest that I'm not gonna have it here I'm gonna try something different here I think Wiener Schnitzel is in our future if I can find one I'm sure I can it's Vienna I think I need some nougat that just looks amazing I, I think I need some of that definitely so this shop here makes tools out of chocolate tools flowers and he gave me some chocolate to try so it's vegan chocolate no milk mmm it's really good I am not gonna even try and pronounce the German name but it's basically a sausage and dough Mmm, that sausage is so good. So when you bite into it, the casing's got that crisp like snap. It's very, very flavorful. And then the dough is light and crispy and you can tell it's brushed with butter and it's not hot, but it's just warm enough. That's a very tasty treat for lunch. So Sarah corrected me. Wiener schnitzel is not something we're gonna find at the market. It's more of a sit down restaurant kind of thing. So hopefully we can find it at some point during our trip, but not at the markets. Okay, so spetzel is a pasta, but it's not like a thin noodle like we have for mac and cheese. This is a really dense pasta, almost more like a dumpling consistency, and it is does have cheese on it and crunchy onions. Mmm, that's really, really good. Okay, so found something extremely unique, something I've never seen before, was very curious about. I asked the pronunciation, she said Kolsch. Basically, it looks like an ice cream cone, but it's not. It's a, th this part is an ice cream cone. It's marshmallow whipped up and then dipped in chocolate. And then this one is got little coconut sprinkles on top. It's good. Yeah, it's a light, fluffy marshmallow on the inside. And then the chocolate's got, it's kind of, you know, when you get a hand dip cone, how it's got that hard shell and then the freshly shaved coconut on the outside. Gotta try new things. So I broke off a piece so you could see how just gooey that marshmallow is. It's so good. 
So this is delicious. Um, and it's like homemade marshmallow. It's not like marshmallows you've just like done something to from the grocery store because the texture is very different and it's so good and it's really creamy. It's good. <laughs> now we've really gotten down into it. Look at that marshmallow. I mean, what? That's so good. <laughs> Okay, seriously, I don't like go off on things very often, but every now and then something you try surprises you so much. Like, so I was like, I had very low expectations when she told me it was marshmallow, and I was like, okay, well, I'll just give it a try. You know, why not? The more you eat it, the better it gets. And towards the end, we were like, forget the outside. We were just taking our fingers and dipping into that marshmallow. So amazing. Four euros, very well spent. Okay, one thing that you need to be prepared for traveling in Europe that us Americans are not used to is pay public toilets. So you need to have coins. These are half a euro, so 50 cent euros to use the bathroom. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. Okay, so we are leaving, okay, we are leaving the Amhof Ooster Market and we are going to the next market. What's the next market called? We don't I know. can't pronounce it. <laughs> we we're gonna get there in a few minutes. Well, that didn't take long. See, right there is the Amhoff Market. We came like a block and a half down, and the next market's right here. Can't remember the name of this one, but we're gonna go explore. You what these markets are a foodie's paradise because you can just walk around try lots of different foods also as a drinker's paradise especially here it's all about the wine there's like every other booth is a wine booth it's you know before noon so we're not there yet but well sarah had a glass already but it's nice to see all the different varieties of everything you can try well it can't be an easter market without easter baskets right and there's a lot of baskets here like every shape size not just like the traditional kids easter baskets like legit using your home eat baskets here industrial size baskets that you can use for just about anything and brooms both the fake witchy brooms and an actual like sweep the ground room. I have always wanted to go to one of those food booths where they have the big rind of cheese under the heat lamp and they just take and scrape it off of the rind directly onto your food. And I found it here in Vienna and it's served over potatoes. So we've got pota uh, like a roasted potato with that cheese on top and they sprinkle little chives on top of that. You can get it with bacon, not a bacon eater, so, but mm, this is gonna be so delicious. I'm gonna do my best for pronunciation and call it Rocklet. That's the name of the booth anyway, and my German is non-existent, so I'm, that's what I'm, oh my God, look at that. Just look at the gooey cheese. Yes! Yum. Mmm. The potatoes are roasted with onions, so the potatoes themselves have a good flavor, and that cheese is like a, Mmm, it's like a medium. It's not like a real dense flavored cheese. It's not a real light cheese. It's somewhere in the middle. It's got a wonderful flavor to it. This is good. Yay! If you did not think the Easter market was all about the eggs, this will prove you wrong. It is just stacks and stacks and stacks of hand-painted eggs. They're so beautiful. Like, I don't need an Easter egg, but I feel like I need an Easter egg just to commemorate that I've been to the Easter market. So I think I'll probably end up buying one. So when I started looking at eggs, I was way on that side of the market. This entire center of the market is these crates after crates after crates of beautifully hand-painted eggs. I absolutely don't need one, but I absolutely do need one, if that makes any sense. So I have to buy one of these beautiful eggs here to commemorate the first time, maybe the only time, I'm at the Easter markets in Vienna. So now we have to choose the perfect egg. So what you don't realize until you pick one of these up is this is a real eggshell. So it's extremely delicate. So they've poked holes in the top and the bottom and they get all of the egg out of the eggshell. And then they run the string through them and they paint them. So I don't know if this is gonna make it home. As much as I want one, like they have these little egg crates, but I feel like you have to buy more than one to get an egg crate. I don't know, I really want one, but I'm scared. 
I don't think it'll make it. The absolute cutest thing, there's this big group of kids here on a field trip and they're sitting down and they've each been given an egg to hand paint right here in the Easter Market. That is so cool. So now we will say off to say to this market. I'm sure I butchered that and I'm sorry. So now we are taking just a lovely stroll through the streets of Vienna, heading to the Opera House because we have got about an hour until our next tour. And so we're just slowly making our way back to the meeting point and looking at all the beautiful architecture in the city. These buildings are just amazing. Just walking through the city, I have to keep stopping and taking pictures and video of these buildings because every building is spectacular. There's not like any boring buildings. They're all ornate and beautiful. Some are palaces, some are churches, some are not. Some are just buildings and they're just all pretty. And there's horses in the streets everywhere. So we have made it over here to the Vienna State Opera House, which is the meeting point for our next tour, but we have almost an hour until that time. So we're just gonna wander in this area and see what we can find. I mean, I'm just like in awe. Like everywhere I look is a beautiful building after a beautiful building. And what's unique about Vienna is like, I've been to cities that have lots of old buildings, but these are all big. Like every building is six to eight stories high everywhere you look. So, I mean, you can just tell that this was the center of something big. A very long time ago, when all these buildings were built, for this many people to be living in an area, to need this size buildings, you know, so long ago, when the population wasn't what it is now. It's just stunning. This city is amazing. We came in a candy shop, and this is make, they make hard candy, and they have free samples. I've had a cough drop, so it tastes very similar to my cough drop right now. Mm. But I can't pass up a good candy store. Okay. Yep, I'm getting like a lemon flavor. It was yellow. It's those hard candies, you know, like you only see at Christmas time, the old fashioned hard candies. That's what this entire candy store is. All right, we are moving again. We have made it to the pickup spot for the bus to get us to take us to Sean Brun Palace. I hope I got that right. Did I get it right? Sean Brun? Sean Brun Palace. We have arrived at Schönbrunn Palace and I have good news and bad news. Good news is I can film the outside and the gardens and the Easter market that's in front of it. No pictures inside. That sucks, but it is what it is. We're gonna go check out this. This is the Summer Palace of the Habsburg. There's about 1,400 rooms inside. We're gonna get to see 20 of them. I'm really sad I can't share pictures. I tried sneak Okay, we are inside the castle grounds now and this building wraps all the way around like a giant horseshoe. So I'll do like a, a 360 degree turn and show you this. We have 15 minutes until our time slot because you have a very specific time slot to enter the museum to see the inside of the palace. There is a giant Easter market. They're like, hey, y'all got 15 minutes. Go check out the Easter market. Obviously, we can't see the Easter market in 15 minutes. So we'll just look at a couple of stalls before we have time to meet our guide. Yeah, so as you can see, we this is the third Easter market we've been to today and by far the largest. And I really hope we have some more time at the end to explore. 15 minutes ain't gonna cut it here. Okay, this is hilarious. We came over here to look at the fountain. You've gotta see the look on the woman's face. She's like, we have 10 minutes to eat our pizza pretzel. It's cold, I was expecting it to be warm. Yum. Well, we had just enough time to eat our pizza pretzel and it's almost our time to go in. Can't take the video, I can take my camera in, but I can't use my camera inside. So I will give you a full report when we get to the gardens, because I can't record the gardens.
so we were actually able to take pictures and videos in the palace i just couldn't do it on this camera i had to use my cell phone which was just fine but beautiful i couldn't do commentary i couldn't vlog in there but beautiful palace the, we only got to see about 20 rooms they're very fancy very opulent it just shows you how you know the Habsburgs lived just very over the top very fancy learned some things that I could have you know done without like you know she just sat there and had a little potty under her chair because her dress was too big for her to get up and go to the bathroom I didn't need to know that but now you know that too you're welcome now we get to go see the gardens and when I say she most of the history that you're gonna you know learn here in uh, Vienna is about Maria Theresa who was um, she was the Empress but she was never called the Empress she was the wife of the Emperor but she had all the power she had 16 kids you know that's who you really learn about here I am not gonna even pretend to know you know the history of Austria and, and and everything that goes with that but everything that we've been told every stop we've made has been about her so the palace you know was her pet project the decorations everything like that the paintings inside she's featured you know you can really tell who wore the pants and the family or the big giant dress that she couldn't even use the bathroom in I think that's just crazy so we are here at the end of winter spring has is just starting to spring sprung and this is not yet so this is still very very bare so in another month or so this is going to be beautiful The other trellis has leaves on it and you can tell by the the leaves and the fact that there's thorns these are roses they just have not bloomed yet the other side has nothing on no leaves no nothing but man this is gonna be beautiful when it's in bloom so the gardens here are open to the public at no charge the tour on the inside there's a fee for that but you can come here go to the easter market and wander the gardens for free but we've made a judgment call the uh gardens not in bloom yet it all looks dead so we're gonna go to the market instead this is definitely the biggest of the three markets we've been to today there's so many stalls there's two it's split into two sides on each side of the palace i mean you could probably spend all day here dang it we have to get on a stupid bus and go back you know I really wanted to just like hang out here at the market but it's either we get back on the bus that takes us back or we have to find our own way and at this point we're not gonna do that so we're gonna head back and we you know yes we have a surprise for tonight kind of excited about that so we're gonna go drop some stuff off on the ship and take a little walk one thing that's really cool, see all these buildings behind me? These are the buildings that ran on the sides of the palace. In the time of the Habsburgs, that's where all the servants lived. But now it's not a palace anymore. There are no Habsburgs. And they've been made into flats or apartments. And anyone can get put on a waiting list. And when one comes available, anybody can live right here in the palace. That's pretty cool. Well, the sun is starting to set here in Vienna, but our day is not over. So we're docked here from, I think we got here about 8.30 a.m. Um, our tour started at 9, and we don't leave until 10.30 p.m. So we've got all night to go wherever we want. So most people on the ship are going to a special concert at the Opera House, which is Mozart and Beethoven. And I'm sure it is beautiful, wonderful classical music but that's not what we're doing. So stay tuned for a little bit longer. We are just taking a break to recharge our batteries, both mentally, sickly, taking some medicine and our actual phone batteries. And then we are headed back out very shortly. So we decided to bypass the cultural music, which would have been beautiful, and we came here. We're at Prater. This is an amusement park. It has been a recreational ground since 1766 and 
an actual amusement park since 1865, making it the second oldest amusement park in the world. Yeah, pretty cool to come here. So the grounds are open 24 seven, no charge to get in, and then you pay per ride. So each ride is individually owned and operated. And so some might not be open and some are open. So we're gonna go see what we can find and get something to eat here. That Ferris wheel is over 100 years old. There's obviously some modern rides here too, but obviously, you know, they've got old rides, you've got new rides, you've got some that are, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old, all mixed in, and it's not busy at all. So in paying per ride, some rides seem like, oh, that's a good price, and some don't. So the indoor roller coaster, and we're just getting a, a lap in first before we ride anything. The indoor roller coaster is five euros a person. That's not too bad for a, a roller coaster. The spinning sombrero is 450. That's not a good value to me. Uh, we're gonna skip that one. But we're definitely gonna ride some stuff. We just haven't decided what yet. That's a possibility. Oh, looks fun. We're riding Hotel Psycho. I don't know if I can film on here or not, but I will try. Nope, nope, halfway through, I was like this. I couldn't, nope. It's like a haunted house, you know, like at Halloween time where things are jumping out at you and nothing touches you, but still, I mean, it's like gore and lots of jump scares. It was scary. Like literally the photo at the end has me like this. <laughs> garden back here but I see some people have food but we can't figure out where the food came from I think you have to sit at a table order a beer and then you can order some food we managed to find a menu that is 100% in German no English translations so we're gonna move on and see if we can find something else that we can understand what we're ordering <laughs> we're trying to decide if we're gonna be brave enough to ride the swings definitely get a good view from up there but it's a bit chilly right now and I'm sick so I'm not sure if that's a smart idea but I do love the swings. Well, big bummer. The one ride that Sarah really wanted to ride here was Jack the Ripper and it's not open tonight. So probably only about half the rides are open right now. I don't know if it's because of the season. I don't know if it's because of it's a weekday or the fact that it's at night. It looks like during the day, most everything might be open, um, but we want it to come at night because lights and everything's more fun at night, but only about half of it's open. We're just gonna ride what we can and get something to eat because I think we're hungry. That's a coin coming out of his butt. Yum, they have the marshmallow cones here like we got earlier today. And, hold on, they call it candy floss here. It's cotton candy to us. But I think we need food first. I'm really considering getting another one of those marshmallow things just to eat the marshmallow out of the middle. It's so good. All right, my Disney peeps, can you hear that? It's the Little Mermaid. It's Sebastian singing in German. So I'm wondering what this ride is. It's under the sea in German. My neck hurts. That was literally the longest drop tower ride I've ever seen. They were up there forever before it dropped. So you get really good views from up there. Everybody looks happy coming off. Not this brave, but we decided to do instead iceberg we're gonna do the iceberg you know sometimes kitty rides can be fun but it, it, I don't think it's technically a kitty ride it's just it's an interactive frozen ride we'll see that was fun like legit Fun. It was quirky and you know you had this little camera and you're supposed to snap pictures You know if you've ever done like Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger spin at uh, Disney it was kind of like that, but we didn't care. We were just looking around at everything There was one point there were two little animals humping and I totally missed that when Sarah caught it, but I didn't That was fun. I like that. No, we still need food. We haven't eaten yet. <laughs> Well, we made it back to the ship. We never got anything to eat at Prater because everything was either closed or like the menu was in German and we couldn't figure it out. So we came back to the ship, 
we missed our dinner time, but fingers crossed they'll let us get something to eat. And they're gonna have a late dinner for all the people who went to the Mozart concert, so we'll get something then for sure. What a fun day in Vienna. Amazing. All right, well, that's gonna be a wrap for Vienna. We are back on the ship. They were so nice, they gave us some sandwiches. We missed dinner, so we couldn't get like the dinner menu, but they made us some sandwiches. And at 10.30, we're gonna have goulash and Vienna sausages. Gotta go check that out. Jason was very excited that I'm coming to Vienna. He said I had to get some Vienna sausages, but he actually wanted some in a can for me to bring back home. That was not a possibility but we have to at least try the ones on the ship. One thing I wanted to say that I learned about Vienna and is that that we say Vienna, but in German they say Wien. Did I say that right? Wien. Wien, Wien. but it's spelled W-I-E-N. So Wien or Wiener is Viennese. So it looks like Wiener to us but that's not how it's said. And it's gotten a little dirty meaning over the years. But just remember, Wiener means Viennese. There you go, there's your lesson for the day. See you tomorrow, still in Austria tomorrow, heading down the Danube. We have two stops on the river tomorrow. So we have a morning cruise, no, a morning tour and an afternoon tour. If you're new to this channel, be sure and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. See you tomorrow. Bye.